All right, this is the decider to find out who moves on to the round of 16. Will it be Targa or will it be Naniwa? We've already seen these two play. And Targa didn't have the best of results there. So Naniwa is looking in prime form to move on if he can just step over Targa. Before you work out, Kolaris, mm -hmm. before you do any physical activity, you have the phase called the warm-up. Yes. Um, the first game of the day, the first workout of the day, the first sport of the day, you're a little bit cold, the muscles aren't really working properly. It's true. And, uh... Keep going. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, basically, that Targa had to play the first game of the day here. Yeah. But now he's got a bit of oil in the works. All right. He's warmed up. He's been warming up for three hours and 40 minutes. But he's ready. And this is the time that I would love to, on the side of me, go like this and grab a can of Fosters mm -hmm. and say, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie for Targa. But I don't have that. No. And I won't say that because he is from Norway. I sincerely hope out there... There was a lot of Australians watching. There was a lot of Australians that it's like 5 a.m. They're they all have. drunk. <laughs> like, oh, Apollo with that Foster <laughs> shenanigans again. But, uh, you know, he's doing Australia proud here today. Targa, of course, um, studied a long time ago in Australia. But does he now have what it takes, in all seriousness, to beat Naniwa? Do you think he can do it? With the style we've just seen, that I think he'll bring into to play in one of the three, if not all of the three, games... Do you see that aggressive play working against Naniwa, who hmm. is the expert over Todd in, the, in this scenario yeah. on how to play this matchup? Because now it's like you beat one play, but now it's the expert class. I think Naniwa in this matchup is a full package. I think he can deal with whatever's thrown at him, and arguably he can also throw back at his opponent equal amounts of aggression. Very, very well calculated amounts of aggression. We saw it in the, pre in the first series. So... I, I don't know whether this will work for Targa. It's going to be so hard to pull off. All right. Well, we'll have to find out, guys, because it is now ready to begin the final map of the final game of Group A. I don't know who's going to win. I don't have any predictions. Let's just find out which way this is going to go. Is it going to Norway or Sweden? Find out. We shall find out. Let's jump in as we have. Spawning up to the top left-hand corner, uh, Blue Protoss, representing the Alliance in Sweden. He is Naniwa. And down to the bottom right, we have our red Zerg. Representing Norway and Dignitas, he is Targa. Uh, wow. Targa's got a difficult task, for sure. Uh, there's no doubt a difficult task. But Nani was changing things up yeah. already. Imagine now... Oh, my God. I almost ripped my headset off my Ooh, head. Sorry. Are. Imagine now <laughs> if we saw a cannon rush. Blind Whoa. cannon rush Just... coming from a player who tries to go three hatch who tries to counter build Naniwa, mm. and we've seen it time after time after time. Imagine that. Wow, actually, that would be really cool. Really cool, but at the same time, Targa, he could be on certain extra levels and be like, I know that you think I might do this, so I'm just gonna play spawning pool, but I don't think he will do. <laughs> no, he's not gonna do no. it. It's not that, not that deep of a mind game here, <laughs> but there is no early forge. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a Nexus first, so a change of style here from Naniwa coming up, not playing, towards how he likes to play. Um, but again, three hatcheries, if that was to happen here, would work okay. Yep. It would work okay against this if Targa was to take that risk against Naniwa, who I would say eight, if not nine times out of 10, goes gateway expand, man. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. And Targa here, we're gonna see how he wants to play this out. It's funny because the Overlord will reach that position, uh, not before the expansion, uh, so. Uh, indeed, he has to go for the spawning pool, not knowing what is going on. But he could have gotten away with it quite considerably. Uh, now we'll see that forge and he'll be like, ah, oh well. Ah, change up. And now, even though the words I used to describe Targa versus Todd was that Targa, upon seeing this, probably felt comfortable against Todd in game number one, saying, all right, this is what I've played against a lot of the time. But I would like to say the reverse now. Very simply because, yes, it's what Targa's played against the most, uh -huh. But Nani was not doing the same. And yeah. all of a sudden he's like, oh my god, he's not doing the same anymore. I was expecting this, and now he's doing this. And it throws him off a little bit. Definitely, oh, I'd yeah. say, throws him off a little bit. Even though it's exactly the same build as Todd used to start off. 
It's the mind. It's the it's mentality of this. Not expected from Naniwa, as you said. It's just not expected. And with this double gas going down now, he is playing uh, a standard of standard yeah. for Jack Fast expands. And how is gonna how are gonna deal with it? I mean, Targa's got to be like, all right, what what's the main reason why he's changed? What is that reason? What yeah. does he want to do? And all these thoughts that you're going through, kind of tear you away from your from your plan and you, you start thinking too much you sometimes you overthink too oh, much yeah. and sometimes you make wrong decisions based on overthinking so this is something which target really needs to avoid if he wants to play this game out well just go to what you normally do so three hatcheries coming down with no gas very normal against this build coming out from nanny while he's chasing the probe out which is always a good find but there's another one. There is another there one. There is another one. He's a sneaky, sneaky ninja, is Naniwa. As, uh, we'll send that out and get confirmation of that third. Very, very important. Um, so uh, that probe will actually get away as well. Two Zerglings are not going to be able to kill that by the time it gets back to that Photon Cannon. So, whoa, actually Naniwa is going to the natural and getting some confirmation of something. But well, hmm. he's got another probe out and... Uh, Target's going to be like, huh? <laughs> Where did you come from? Yeah. But there's plus one attack on the way, and there's also the Cybernetics core. Huh. And with a probe escaping and going to the left-hand side here, um, I really feel that Naniwa very simply <laughs> may just go for a gate. Oh, no. Robotics facility coming in. What is he up to? All right. There's, there's, okay. <clears throat> Whenever I see this, and I've been, I've been working on this kind of style recently, mm -hmm. robotics facility, for me, stands out all in. Yeah. But... There are other builds that do work. There are builds that you can take maybe a third base with an immortal, the crappy builds that don't really work too well. But the, it's either an all-in, immortal all-in, or he goes over to a warp prison pretty fast. Mm. And then you can play with a warp prison quite well, take a third base behind it quite well, because your opponent has to deal with a warp prism and you can take a third base behind it. So I wonder what it is. If it's an observer, I'm going to be like, huh? But, <laughs> The way that it's lining up, with three extra gateways coming in, I, I'm not sure. Okay, warp prison. Okay, yeah. But he sees the robo facility being chrono boosted at the back as well. Targa has every single scrap of information he would ever yeah. need. And he just <laughs> identified exactly what I was saying to you guys yeah. on stream. He just said it. He's seen everything. He's seen the three gateways, the robo, the gases on the natural, everything. He may even see the warp prison. He may. And then he sees absolutely 100% everything. Uh, the warp prism, I don't think, will go detected unless the overlord turns around right now. Uh, but that warp prism is moving out in such a way that it will not be spotted just yet. So, uh, Roach Warren's on the way. He knows that maybe some of the aggression's not coming now, and he has to prepare for that. Mm. He's getting the layer, he's getting extra gas, he's just making sure he has all the options available to him to just deal with this. Yeah, I think Nanny well will expand behind this, but it's the yeah. style I talked about where you do kind of be aggressive yet defensive with the warp prism uh, and so on. All right, Statman K. What's Naniwa's win percent against Zerg, actually, so far in WCS? Can you tell me? Interestingly enough, I would have to minimize oh, uh, okay. to find Don't out do that. Then. Don't but, do that then. Uh, no. Um, although, against in WCS, yeah. it's if I had to estimate, I think it would be around 12 wins and 7 losses or something like that. It's not as dominant as you would consider it to be, because obviously he had a lot of kills in Dreamhack and stuff. But hold the phone here. Naniwa's putting on a lot of aggression. That's a lot of Zerglings, though, at the same time. Needs to pick up those sentries, and he does get them out. And just trying to kill off these Zerglings where he can. Do Still have a really good attack, but not doing the best of things there. Not doing, uh, not doing the works. Uh, yeah, so just killing off those Zerglings. And killed off four workers. Not a huge result. Yeah, it's uh, Statman K. It's not that high. 50, 58%. Damn. 10 and 7. I was close. 12 and 7, 10 and 7. Oh, well. Close. It's not that high, but still, you know, WCS has been going for a long time now. This includes all not all tier events, Season 1 as well, where Naniwa was still kind of learning this new style which we're seeing today, yeah. which is really a copy from SOS. Um, the way that he plays is very SOS style. It's like his favorite player. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he absolutely loves that style. Um, and uh, now, well, this look at this army he's building up here. Yeah. Two immortals, third, third one's being chrono boosted out. Yeah, what prism? Uh, I thought it would be a third base, but it's clearly not here. <laughs> so no. we see extra gateways been thrown down and immortals coming in. Um, I wonder if Targa has what it takes to deal with this. The, the biggest upgrade, which I like and is the best against this, is actually the Roach Speed. Yep. Which is on its way. Do you reckon he can stop Naniwa's attack? 
three immortals. Huh. Great micro as always. The warp prism's already damaged, remember. Well, so he... is the mothership core. By the time this gets across the map, he's going to have like 40, maybe even 50 roaches. So that's so much firepower. I'm not sure how you actually deal with that if it comes in at the proper angles. Well, he's, his target counterattacking, what's he doing with these roaches on the right hand side? Mm. He needs to formulate a plan here. He's up to a very high supply count. Look at that, 170. Yeah. With four overlords coming in, he'd be able to max out if this is slowed down. Yeah, he has four this approaches is... already. And he's coming in from two sides. Uh -oh. He's coming from the north. He also has his defense set down at the south too. These four fields will have to be crucial. Oh, the most of course sees it as well. He knows what's going to ab is about to occur. And he has to go for the engagement before that other army reaches him right now. If he does not, then he's going to be completely sandwiched up against big, big chunks of this army. And he's doing exactly that. Throwing down good force fields, separating a lot of that off. He knows he's in a little bit of a precarious position, though. Those roaches are now coming in from the back. Yeah, and he needs to kill the rocks. I'd kill the rocks, then go in, actually, yeah. because it opens up a larger area. But force fields do come down, but the roaches are in. One of Auto goes Ooh. down here, so a third of the real attack power is gone. He doesn't have that many more force fields left. Maybe four or five left between these sentries here. And now all of those roaches... They're slowly getting through. They're slowly killing a lot of this off. Army supplies, 71 against 45. Oh, Targa's breaking through. Naniwa, is he going to be able to do it? A new warping comes in. Another Immortal gets targeted down. He's going to do oh. it. Oh, he killed off the Warp Prism as well. He's going to try and evacuate it. out. What a great play by Targa, killing off the Warp oh. Prism. Perfect. Perfect defense there. Targa smacks one to Naniwa. Wow. And takes a 140 supply lead to 54. Oh, boy, whiz. What a great setup there from Targa, from three different angles. And that did not work. No, it did not. And now, I, Naniwa, he's trying to warp in some Zealous, to try and go some counter-aggression, but these roaches are just going to come and kill him. I, I don't know what else <laughs> he's going to do. Oh, man, this is uh, it's not looking good here for the Swede in game number one. The Warp Prism really didn't do too much from the get-go, right? It was yeah. stopped very early on. Very early. He could have had Immortals out faster. It was delayed because of the Warp Prism. And Targa makes a very, very, very good hold. I, I feel as if, you know, Targa was so pleased to see the build that Naniwa had chosen because yeah. he's probably played against this a million, million times. Yeah, and he really made no mistakes himself, you know, exactly. with his overload production, his unit production. He set himself up very nicely. And the Roach is just going to clean up these Zealots there, trying to keep Naniwa in the game. Uh, whilst he adds on some Hydralisks as well. This is all that Naniwa has at the back. 77 army supply against 25. Good time warp. Trying to keep that Immortal alive, and he will do in the end. But the reinforcements are just going to stomp across the map. Yeah, this... I mean, Hydralisks... Ain't no thing. Yeah, I mean, with uh, Hydralis now coming in, plus one attack going to be there for them as well. I mean, that's one of the, the biggest things I've noticed from a lot of uh, Zerg players in recent days. One Evolution Chamber, man, just it helps so much. There used to be a day where people used to get two. It's all about one because you just have so much more units to defend, to attack. Is that... Go on. Is that drone? What's this drone? Uh, I was going to say, if that's a hatchery, man. <laughs> if that was a hatchery. Uh, no one put it past some people uh, against Naniwa <laughs> because uh, Naniwa is a player that can go on till and trying to throw him off like that is something that could occur. Uh, but anyway, mothership call gone as well. Naniwa is just going to try to go for another attack here with plus two stalkers maybe. Colossus coming in. Uh, he's in a bit of a, a dire situation to say the least. Yeah, the Roach is perfectly positioned to tank for these Hydralisks as well. Force fields go down, and yes, he will kill off a lot of the Roaches at the front. Uh, but still, so many Hydralisks for the firepower behind this, with reinforcing Hydras and Roaches coming as well. Too much. Too much for the Alliance player. Yeah, another Immortal is going to go down, and more and more units streaming across. Targ is going to beat Naniwa. He is yeah. definitely map number one here, maybe not in the entire series. That's up to Naniwa here, as Targa comes pushing in. The cannons go down. There's just nothing left to defend. And Naniwa's trying to hold on with everything he's got. Remember, Naniwa is the number one ranked non-Korean player at the moment in the WCS system. Yeah. But right now, he's facing elimination after this map from, in the round of 32. Uh, Targa's the complete opposite as well. He is nowhere. He's not on even the map of being highly ranked in WCS point system. He qualified through painstaking resources. And GG there for game number one. Targa wow. takes it. And again, Targa has been so furious about trying to get to this spot. Yeah. And now he's one map away from the round of 16 in his debut appearance in Premier League. 
this this is big. If ta if Targa can take it, can take it, very big indeed. Well, the thing is with Targa is he's always had a very good Zerg versus Terran, very aggressive. He's got great macro in itself, anyway. So we can see with his big power up up to his units. Um, I don't think he practiced versus Terran at all in this group. I think he said, "Well, I'll give four GG my yeah. best. Maybe I'll I'll do an all in here or there, but I'll focus on my uh, versus Protoss." And it seems to be working okay for him. I mean, there's two Protoss in this group, Todd and Naniwa. And if he eliminated his practice versus Terran and just said, well, I'm doing okay versus it anyway, and I'll focus on Protoss, he may advance from this group. He may do. And we may have a very similar uh, Season 3 to Season 2 where <sighs> a lot of favorites were knocked out. And very Naniwa quickly. is a favorite to even win the whole thing. It would be so crazy if we had, like a WCSEU curse where all like the top five or top six players Couldn't next well round next just season. kind of like just go I mean it happens a lot in many different tournaments actually where a player wins a tournament yeah. and then he comes to the next season or the next tournament and just doesn't perform yeah. as well this is weird uh, but right now Target one map away from knocking out Naniwa it's crazy stuff it's crazy but it could occur because Derelict Watcher is our next map and then if we go into a game number three, uh, then it will be Polar something or other. What's Polar it called? Knights. Polar Knight. There you go. That one. All right. Okay. So let's get into game number two. See if the Norway region can take it 2-0. Or if our Swedish player spawning down in the bottom left can tie up 1-1. One one. Representing the Alliance, he is Naniwa. And up to the top right, we have our Norwegian player currently one game up. He is Targa. Ah, Naniwa. Now, I bet that was the sound Naniwa made. Well, probably not. He was more like... As, uh... <laughs> All right, back to basics for Naniwa yep. here. Um, no funky strats, no Nexus first and going into something else. It's back to what he knows best, which is gateway expand yep. into, uh, depending on what Targa does here, probably fast Stargate, but could be additional gateways beforehand. Targa, though... We'll, we'll feel this out very nicely. Both of these players know each other's style. That's the best part about this. We yeah. know their styles. <laughs> you know, we know Targa likes a lot of units. We know Naniwa likes a lot of Voideries. That's, that's the styles, guys. Yeah, that's if you, if any it. of your friends ever ask, if you were to describe Naniwa's playstyle, what is it? Say Voideries. Voideries. Now it is. Voideries. In this match, police, yeah, it works out very nicely. Um, although, he hasn't really done a whole lot of it today in comparison to what I was expecting. Yes. I was expecting it every game. I am expecting it from every game from now. Oh yeah, This game yeah. and the next game because he knows that's his strategy. He doesn't want to overuse it because people just get used to playing against it and yeah. deal with it. But I definitely feel that I don't think he's going to go over to like how he played versus Targa originally was Templar Archives play. Archons, Zealots. Yes. Because we saw Targa go for heavy Zerglings to try to counter Naniwa's build. So let's put a let's put a hashtag mind game out there for you. Mm. What happens now that we know and maybe Targa knows that Naniwa is going to play his normal go-to build, uh -huh. Void Rays? Does Targa now go back to heavy Zerglings upon knowing that his opponent isn't going to try anything like Zealot Archon again? I does he go one one upgrades for his Zerglings to try to deny that third for as long as possible? Mm. I think he kind of has to. I, I you know it's a very good style against what Naniwa plays. He's got Naniwa pinned against the corner. Naniwa's not going to kind of cheap out on this game. He's not going to cheap out. If you do, you die. So. Naniwa has to go back to what he knows, and then likewise, Targa's like, right, I've got him pinned. Uh, he's he's got to he's got to scramble. He's got to do something about this. Yeah, this so. is this is tense, man. Because yeah. remember as well when we talked about how important the WCS points are for this season. Oh, Naniwa is in a position. Naniwa is in a, a position where he needs these points. Yes. Of course, he's in the top 16 right now. But he may not be if he's out in the round of 32. Look what happened to Tilo, Stefano, Demaga, 4GG. After losing in Season 2, all of them fell out of the top 16, even though they were all in the top 16 before the season begun, just like Naniwa is now. If Naniwa falls out of Season 2 here now, Season 3, sorry, here now, he won't be top 16, man. It's that simple, yeah. I think. It's, a, it's that big a difference. Each of these seasons awards so many points that you get 
those players that just kind of finish consistently in other regions yeah. and, you know, are just slowly eking forwards with the points. And if they finish consistently this season as well, not necessarily making those top numbers, they'll still gain a lot of points. So Naniwa has to play his heart out. He cannot go out in this round. All right, we'll find out if that's going to happen or not, as Naniwa has kind of seen his opponent's style so far, which is gasless. And that is the same in this game as well. Nani was decided to throw down two extra gateways here as well, instead of a faster Stargate, because he opted for one gas and then a second one later on. He will follow this up with a Stargate behind it, but he absolutely, absolutely has the opportunity to do a bit of damage to Targa in a very predictable location, which the pylon's gone down every single game. It's always the same place, always the same, just outside that third, a little bit south by the smoke, always the same. Targa's already got lings on the way. Yeah. Naniwa needs to do, well, doesn't need to, but would like to do a bit of damage. If he doesn't do anything, it doesn't matter. But if he does, he, he's in the lead. Yep, certainly so. He has to warping in three zealots as well. And this warp in has come a little bit quicker here. Uh, Target did not find this pylon as quickly as he did in previously. Uh, and even a pylon on the high ground as well. Yeah, this is he's definitely looking to kill this third. Oh. Um, right now, he... There's a lot of gas in the back, but you can, you can always play with gas at another stage. You can bank it up, it's fine. Yeah. But if he continues to warp in Zealots, he may be able to destroy this third. That's There's it. a lot of Zerglings on the way, though. A lot. Exactly. A lot of Zerglings here. Trying for that time warp, trying to slow a lot of this down. Speed is nowhere near completion. Still needs another 40 seconds. Loses a queen. A big pickup already. Oh, and he's going to hatch. Oh, he's going to get this. He's, he's going to target it. He actually has to take those Zerglings now. Oh, he's sacrificing it. He realizes it's dead. He's trying to kill off the reinforcement paths as quickly as possible. But he knows it's dead. Naniwa's trying to get the best of both worlds here. Trying to get the hatch and as many units as he can. Yeah. Uh, Targa, I, the Targa's going to all in from this. He's oh. building roaches. He's trying to. And, well, a lot of those circlings get slowed down once again. Speed is about to finish two seconds away. But the hatchet is going to die to a lone zealot. Yeah, Naniwa's just trading so efficiently now. Even if the circlings get in there, that's a lot of zealots. Wow, he's only lost 150 resources worth here at the moment. And one of those was a pylon, I think. So, but anyway. Uh, and now the roach is coming, but the... I mean, the Zealots have done so much, the hatchery's gone down, it's just simply three gateways, consistently warping in Zealots. It's so simple. It's so simple. And it's worked. It's worked considerably. Look at how cost-effective he's been with these Zealots, killing off a hatchery, killing off a mountain of Zealots. Yeah, I, I have to... I, <laughs> he has to roll in from here with Roaches. There's yeah. like no way he can play from behind from this position. So the roaches go across the map. I know. <laughs> but there's already a void ray. There's three yeah. sentries, four sentries. One void ray is just like, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, would you get out the game, please? Would yeah. you please, please just get out the way so I can go to the round of 16? Targa, yeah. please. Targa. This and Targa's game... like, oh, no. Manuel uh -oh. got really angry. Now he's playing really, really well. Mm. Aww. Boo-hoo. Well, okay. These roaches... Going to try and make something happen. 13 roaches, one void ray starts and begins its arduous journey of killing all of these roaches, but there's force fields. So, Naniwa's not going to let this in. You're not coming in this house. Yeah, I mean, even if he did let a couple units in, the zealots that could kill everything too. The charged up void ray, multiple sentries, a thousand gas basically. He's got 700 gas. He can warp in end on end on sentries. And he's, he will let units in here. This is not a mistake. He's like letting them in. Yeah, why not? No Look at that, reason trapping to the let roaches too. Trapping and... him. Killing everything off that one Void Ray superhero. Four kills. There you um, go. GG, well played. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, that, it's that simple, guys. <laughs> that uh, Naniwa opened up that game very, very easily and uh, finished it very swiftly as well. And like I said, Naniwa got a little angry and played a little bit harder and uh, crushed Target in that game. Very simply. Just very, very simply game. And now we get to... Finish the night as we began, with the same two players on the same map, Polar Knight, why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Let's see who's going to win this time, though. As uh, we did see Naniwa kind of rip his opponent apart uh, in the first series, and he did again there. I think now that the, the, the Tetley's advert can play, the no-nonsense Tetley's advert can come in. Anyone from England will get that. Um, because the no-nonsense is, is the card's been played. Game one was yep. a bit of nonsense, messing around a little bit, trying something a little bit different. And now that's out the way. It's 1-1, one, one, and it's just one map now to decide who's third place in the group and who is second and moves on to the round 16 to play live from the ESL Cologne Studios. Yeah, very important, and it's not only WCS points, the money ramps up very nicely as well with each round that you pass. Yep. Uh, so, both these players moving on to the round of... Th I, 
is it like 1,000 to 1,500 for the next? Uh, oh. It's 1,500 minimum right now. Ah, they've yeah, both yeah. Uh, got, and then it goes up to 2,000 if they make yes. it into the around a 16. The points is also an extra 100 points, WCS mm -hmm. points, which is all the difference because right now for Naniwa, for example, he's about 400 points away from dropping out, but with yeah. an extra 100, he moves now 500 points away from dropping out, and that will only continue to increase throughout the round of 16 if he was to do well. Um, so the third map then, Polar Knight. Mm. It's a two-player map. It's large, quite large actually, um, but it has not been explored very well. Exactly, yeah. Let's just now think about game number one of the evening, which was Targa playing a heavy Zergling style to prevent Naniwa from taking a third base because it is difficult to do so on this map. Yep. But Naniwa chose on that map to go Zealot Archon against a heavy Zergling style, which is the style we talked about just now in this first map, in the second map, sorry. So what do we now think is going to happen? What do you think can happen on Polar Knight? Uh, well, again, with you uh, mentioning that it is very, very unexplored, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a very, very similar game to the, f uh, the first that we saw. Uh, but I still kind of have to go back to Naniwa just goes for his Voidray composition again. Like, yeah. maybe with that little bit of pressure, it worked out so well, that game. Like, why not mix it in? It's not really that much of a gamble. You have the ability to recall out if you think, all right, you have enough defenses here. Either I'm going to use them on time warps if you see just a handful, or you use it on a recall and just get out. And then you're transitioning onto Void Rays back home as well. So I think it's the pokes into the Void Rays, because I think Targo can deal with the poke. All right. Targa loves to deal with the pokes, and uh, we'll see if he can. Uh, I'd expect so, too. I think Targa would have learned a lot from the first series as well. That's the thing with yeah. StarCraft, is when you lose a game, you learn a lot from the losses, and you can put it into another time. Luckily for Targa, that time is just a few hours after his initial loss. So yeah. can he learn from what happened in game number one and series number one of the day? Can he turn things around, and can he knock out the highest-ranked non-Korean in the StarCraft II WCS 2013? Could happen. It certainly could. Both of these players, it could go either way. Targa taking that first map showed that there are chinks in Naniwa's armor. And that could be exploited here as all these players are loaded up and good to go. Pull the Knight is our map as we started the night off. So let's jump right on in as we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner as our red Protoss representing Sweden and the Alliance. He is Naniwa. And... Down to the south. Never mind. All right. <laughs> GG. I All right. don't know what just happened. Nor do I. Nor do I. Mr. Naniwa disappears into the night. Yeah. It's. It, I just keep repeating in my head. It's so weird that Naniwa, who is the most successful player at the moment uh, in the Europe and North American scene, may not go to BlizzCon if he doesn't yeah. win this game. Like, he will be out of the top 16. There's no doubt in my mind. He will be out of the top 16. The um, way that it will work, very, very unlikely he's able to exactly. sustain it. Unless he, by chance, won New York until Extreme Masters and That's by chance okay, won, so, yeah. like, all the... No, but other than yeah. that, other than finishing super high in those I mean, tournaments, the two it's impossible. tier one events left this year before BlizzCon is I Am New York and DreamHack Bucharest. Is Singapore a new ting, uh, tier one as well? I think it's a tier two. Might be. I'm not sure exactly, um, but there's three events. Whatever it is, there's three tier events left, and you need to win them yeah. <laughs> if you lose here, basically. And that's too much pressure. That's too difficult. That's very difficult to do. And, uh, of course, there's other players that, especially now that the Korean scene is starting to spread out into the Western world, a lot more of those than oh, ever before, definitely. there's going to be a lot of players attending these. A lot of hard plays. It's not as easy um, as you think <laughs> to win a tournament, of course. It's yeah, very difficult. That's so. a very good point that you're making there. With the WCS system being how it is and all of these players, you know, gracing us with their presence yeah. in America, WCS, and Europe, WCS, you, you, we just are seeing more of these stronger Koreans. Jadong has built himself on foreign events. There's no denying that. Yeah. Aside from season two and performing very well, yeah. very admirably, before that, he, his points in WCS... The, the specific season were rubbish. They were they were bald. But he the, going to these foreign events. He was in the top sixteen with just foreign events or something ridiculous. I mean, or very he got close. Second, 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 second. Yeah. And he got a lot of tier oh, events seconds. points. 
And uh, funny, uh, he's ranked number two in the WCS point system as well, right behind Innovation. So number two seems to be a number that is sticking quite close to Jadonk. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that will change throughout the rest of the year. I'm quite sure it will, actually. Yeah, uh, but for now, final map between these two players. I don't know who's going to win. I don't have any predictions at all. I have no idea. But I know it should be a good one. It certainly should be. So let's jump on in, guys, to the final map of the night as we have spawning up to the top left. I'm not gonna, I'm, it's the top position. I keep doing that. Everyone spawns in corners on these maps, but this one isn't. All right, top, we have our blue Zerg representing Dings House in Norway. He is Targa. And down to the bottom, our red Protoss representing the Alliance and Sweden. He is Naniwa. And playing in red just fits Naniwa, by the way. Yes. Darth Sidious style. Darth Sidious. Because this is Naniwa all over, playing in red. <laughs> um, he definitely, I definitely would love Naniwa to play a tournament with a hoodie and the hood on. Oh my god. Oh, oh. look out. And then playing in red too. The lightsaber and, imagine and if everything. He, imagine if he played in the, in the round of 16 with red lighting behind him, his hood on as well. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can you make this happen at DreamHack? Is that something that can... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't pass it. <laughs> wouldn't put it past those crazy guys no, to, that's true. to play that's true. the the Darth Vader the the march. Hmm. Wouldn't put it past them or anything, man. Actually, now that I just said DreamHack, is Bucharest also a tier tournament? It's a tier one. Okay, so there's four potentials. Well, is it New York, Bucharest, Singapore? What else? New New York. Yeah, New York, Bucharest, Singapore. And then isn't DreamHack winter before it or it's it? after BlizzCon? Oh, it's after BlizzCon, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's not because. Oh, but that Blizzcon. means Singapore's after BlizzCon as well, then. When Singa no, Sing yeah, Singapore's after it, so it doesn't even matter about Singapore. Wait, There's wait, only wait. two events. It's New York, then, and Bucharest. So I was trying to get to four, and I ended up getting to two. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think about the Singapore dates, so... All right, so anyway, uh, looking at this game now, we have triple hatch like a boss, like a boss. Wow. Coming out from Target. Why not? He knows Naniwa's style, he knows his build, knows this is strong. Um, Naniwa, though, off a single gas very easily after expanding here, can throw down additional gateways to pressure this. Oh, yeah. The problem is, is he ha also had that opportunity in game number one, but messed up. <clears throat> He yes, didn't do he it did. right because the pile got picked off too early. It was spotted too early. But as mentioned, this is a new map. It's a bigger map. There's a lot of places to hide a pile on that Zerg players won't find easily anymore. And I would not put it past Naniwa to pressure this. Yeah, Absolutely, when he finds course. out. Well, he doesn't know what's going on yet. But but there's gas before spawn and pull. Even though that delays the spawn huh. and pull, remember the attack doesn't come until quite later on, so he can do this. If you're going to go through hatch, you might as well get an extractor as well. Yeah. And he will get Zerg and speed out eventually. And Naniwa is sending out the probe scout before actually throwing down the Nexus. So he's going to get full... Com oh, well, uh, he's actually going to the natural. Uh, so he's not going over to the third just yet. But if he checks that and makes sure he does, then he's going to have a, a lot of information very quickly. Targa's crazy, man. You always got to yeah. check if that natural's even there. <laughs> what if this unit's coming from that natural? Because I remember when he knocked Hero out of Dreamhack last year, it was like a slow Zergling all-in. Oh, God, I remember that game. On, it made uh, me cringe. What was the map called? Was it a green one? No, 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 no. I it was, remember. uh... Oh, God, I casted it so many times at big events. I forgot the map name. I've done that sometimes. Uh, Cloud Kingdom. Yeah, Cloud Kingdom. What? Was. You forgot Cloud Kingdom? Yeah, I forgot that name. Oh, yeah, it was Cloud Kingdom. Oh, um, God, I remember now. So, Naniwa knows what he's playing against and is throwing down two gateways. Does he throw down another one, though? Mm. He's built a sentry behind this, so it's taking a bit of his minerals. Look at this probe chilling out down here as well. Yeah, he, d he definitely got to throw it up. Gotta. Fire, man. There's no way you can just let yeah. someone do this to you. You got to. Well, he's going to try. Uh, these Zerglings uh, trying to reinforce this, knowing that, hey, I have taken this third hatchery. I need to make some Zerglings to protect it. That would be very good. But even if he doesn't do anything, it's also smart because it is a mind game thing because there's no drones being made. 23 and only a bunch of Zerglings because he's expecting that well to do this. There's an overlord inside the main base trying to get some more information who sees the gateways, sees the Stargate being added on. Oh, the Zerglings are going to see the pylon instantly. Oh, and they can get the probe here too, which they is could. the most important part. Oh, it's trapped. Wow. Not going to pressure this thing. And we bye should bye. see drones begin now. Well, as I said before, I think that Targa will deal with the poke. And I think he's dealt with the poke. But he's not building drones, Claris. He's building Zerglings. I think he's... There's no way he's going to pressure after this. Wait a minute. What is he building after these overlords finish? Okay. 
I was actually stressing out for a minute that's... and then thinking even more Zerglings were going to be made. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. That's so many Zerglings that's already. That's a lot of Zerglings. That's a lot. He's got 24. It's he has a speed, lot. but... And Naniwa didn't even warp in any units at all. Hmm. Uh, he didn't warp in anything, so... Well, that one century is going to have a field day. Oh, actually... And then he can warp in another yeah, century. Yeah, he can. He can just warp in whatever he wants. He's already got two in his main base as well. He can warp in the kitchen with Zealots. He can Chrono Boost the Gateways. He shouldn't lose to this at all. No, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. I'm saying that, but those Gateways are going really low. <laughs> that one Gateway was going low. He's warping in some Zealots just to keep this out yeah. at bay. So all is good in Naniwa land. 12 drones at once so early on because of these nom, three nom, hatcheries. Nom, 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 nom. Who needs it though? It was 39 drones to 36 pros, and because of all those yeah. zerglings that he made, 14 drones at once. You oh kind of have gosh. to make it up. He's gonna make it up really fast. Yeah. He's already at 47, <laughs> and he's about to go up even more. Eight more. Oh boy. Kaboom. That's a lot of drones really fast. Uh, behind this though, Naniwa only built one Phoenix and it stopped. I think, you know, considering the opening, maybe some less zerglings, but if anything was gonna defeat Naniwa as an opening for Targa, this is the opening that gives Targa that opportunity to really ramp up this game and be going into that mid game with such strength. Mm. Hmm. I mean, Naniwa's gonna attempt to take a th uh, third now, very early on. Roach Warren's down nice and early here by Targa, just in case he's playing it very safe. He's got another 10 drones on the way. He's going to spot Naniwa attempting to take his third now as well. Targa's not going to... Targa's going to play... Um, double Evolution Chamber. Huh. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Is it Zergling style again? Uh, it's much, much later than the usual Zergling style, but every time he's got double Evolution Chamber, it's always been two... Uh, I mean, always been for Zergling upgrades so far. I would love to see range. Love to see range, but there's an interesting placement on these evolution chambers as well. Right at the third, this is this feels really vulnerable to me. How did these zerglings get in? Cheeky little guys, cheeky little guys, go in there and see really nothing. They just see uh, the addition of targets coming in, which is the follow up for this. Yeah, and it is range too. So, the one really good part about Targa's build is that against Naniwa, Naniwa, let's just go over Naniwa's style void rays, defensive void rays. Mm. The word they're defensive, he doesn't move out for a long time. There's not going to be really any pressure play until he has at least a couple of Void Rays out. So Targa in this set has got 71 drones, he's got a macro hatch up, he's got double evolution chip, hasn't built any units since those initial Zerglings, by the way, and now has 1-1 one, one on the way. I fully expect Roach Speed and the Hydroden to come down oh, soon. Yeah. And I think that he's going to play uh, very heavy on timing. So 1-1 one, one timing pressure, 2-2 two, two timing pressure. And the funny thing is, is that N Naniwa is going to have very little information about the abilities uh, in terms of upgrades that his opponent's going to have because the double evolution chamber placement... They're hidden. Yeah, exactly. They're and, completely hidden. And Naniwa doesn't know if it is double evolution chamber or if it's the single evolution chamber, the aggressive play that Targa used against Todd. Yeah. So this is really complicated, you know, deep levels huh. of understanding of how each other play are building up this game. Naniwa has no idea. He sees units coming, and I guarantee you, he's like, all right, here it comes. Here it comes. It's the same time we did it against Todd. It's coming. It's coming. But the thing is, it's just a handful of units. It's not, yeah. They'll have 1-1 one, one soon. They're going to start 2-2 two, two soon. He's got the Infestation Pit, by the way. And I wonder if that's going to be for a Hive or Infestors. I'd actually like Infestors with the economy he's powered himself mm -hmm. up to get. But I'd also like from Targa to take a fourth base. I, I'm not sure if I like the fourth base that's been taken. I prefer yeah. if he kills the rocks at the back, I think. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I mean, he's saying. got a lot of units out there. And it is hidden away, tucked away. Doesn't need to deal with harassment as much. But yeah, Infestors, I, I, I really like this. Like, the fourth base is just a hop, skip, and a jump from his main to just pressure it with Void Rays alone. Or just silly, yeah. silly things like that. I kill the rocks and take this base back here. I, 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 of course, it does delay a little bit. You have to kill a 4,000 uh, health's worth of rocks. But Roaches sat around in the middle doing nothing here right now. Uh, technically, they did kind of push out and pressure a little bit and maybe force some reaction. But aside from that, could be taking that base. All right, well, Tog has got 2-2 two, two on the way. I should start plus two carapace. It's a mistake if he doesn't get that, by the way. Uh, he's getting plus two attack. It's a big mistake he's not getting that now. He really needs to align these upgrades to make his build proper smooth. Um, but so far, Naniwa's starting to get a bit more. Hmm, okay. I've got my uh, Void Rays coming out now. Yeah. And he's got quite a few of them. He's got a pile on forward. He's got quite a lot of units now. His Twilight Council is kind of like... But remember, Naniwa's like on three gateways still. Just remember that. He's got three gateways. Hmm. He's just got three gateways, three stargates. This is a, pre a bit of a pressure to see if he can do stuff. 
And Targa, how are you going to react? He's Targa's at 187 supply, man. I cannot stress how well he's playing with his overlords yeah. and his unit production. It's very, very well done right now. He's uh, max. I mean, <laughs> it's one thing to max out at like the 13, 40 minute mark with roaches or something There's like so that. So many but queens as well. Exactly. He has such a great composition. Yeah. And two twos on the way as well behind it. It's a crazy composition, but it's it's very, very formidable. Yeah, I mean, there's there's going to be a couple of fungus oh. ready soon, too. Imagine that. Imagine if he kills the uh, Mothership Core. I think there might have to be a recall here. Oh. I certainly think so. Ooh, well, the Force Fields divide up quite a bit of that army. Nice fungal on those Void Rays. How much can he do? That ground army's not substantial. There's that recall Ooh. I was talking about. So important. Get out yeah, of there. Yeah, but is he going to be able to hold on? Look at this. The swarm is coming, it's Kalaris. Strong. There's a lot of units. They lost a couple of Void Rays there. If you look at the units lost tab, Nanowas lost more than his opponent, so Far, who uh -oh. has powered up very strong so far. Can Targa do this? Can Targa knock out Naniwa here? He's got, he's got a great economy. He's going to have great upgrades momentarily with plus two attack about a finish. Look at Naniwa's army. There's only six void rays. It's 123 supply against 70. He doesn't want to lose these units though. Oh, Targa, you want to pull oh, back? Our units slipped away from those forces. Look at there these too. queens. Look at these queens marching forwards. Temple Archives isn't ready. Can't feed back him. Oh, he needs the fungals on this as well here. He has a lot of energy for those fungals on those two. Naniwa just, uh, I mean, Targa just knows Naniwa's oh. style. He, he, may, he may have his number. Oh, he's, these queens going to try and keep this army alive for as long as possible. Great force fields by Naniwa, but can they hold on? Because these queens pressuring, they're never going to die. They have so much energy for transfuse. The, the void race, they're not going to kill Naniwa's them. Naniwa's dying. Naniwa is dying. He is down and out, and Targa is going to eliminate Naniwa from season three. I cannot believe what we are seeing. 199 supply to 48. Targa from Norway has done it. GG wow. is second place in this group, and Naniwa is knocked out of the WCS Europe Premier League in the round of 32, the first round <laughs> of this event. What on earth? Targa playing a fantastic series here, two to one. And that, that game, as I said at the very beginning, he had the prime opportunity to clinch that game by the throat with the opening he had, denying that poke that we were saying before. Played it out so well. Naniwa, where the gold mine of points is, is knocked out. He now needs to be able to stick in the top 16 we talked about it before there's two tier one events left this year he actually has to now call up his manager alex garfield and be like buddy get me on the first plane of bucharest now he because needs the he, points it's it's two weeks away it's less than two weeks yeah. away like he needs the points now but targa has just pulled a major upset i think all predictions were for gg and Naniwa coming through, but why? Naniwa in third place. Why does this keep happening to us? <laughs> it's in, it's absolute craziness. But yeah. what was the what was the first upset that we had in that first day of season two? It was like TLO going out or yeah, something on the Lions. Something crazy. Yeah. But it, it just keeps happening, man. We keep having these upsets and I'm I'm actually looking fully. I think it was TLO, but Wow. Anyway. Well, well, well. I mean, what do we have here in front of us, man? We have this kind of Situation where the best ranked player is knocked out and Targa goes through with alongside 4GG, who of course will continue to represent uh, France, <laughs> of course, as he does here, playing from Millennium and playing from France. And he will continue through. But it's a good start to Group 8 here. Uh, an interesting start, just continuing the Season 2 trends of the Europe Premier League where upsets happen and craziness happens i mean i didn't expect that at all i didn't expect no, that at all. in season two we had things that didn't we didn't expect either uh but momentarily we will be going into an interview with targa just like season two so we'll be having a couple of words with him shortly to just kind of get his feelings he's just <laughs> he's just accomplished something pretty big here oh yeah something pretty big indeed he's the lowest ranked player of the group he's one of the lowest ranked players in the entire of wcs as well being a debut into the premier league and having not done anything really major in tier events either so this is big for him and the, and the funny thing is is if for example let's just put it out there i know it this it's really deep on what we're saying and thinking but if target was to win premier league was to top two season finals he's actually top 16 now it's, it's actually yeah. possible to do so with the amount possible. of points on the line. It's a lot. You get 1,500 from, tier one, uh, from, from this, and I think it's 3,000 for first place at the season finals. That's 4,500 in one Big. season. That's like up there. That's like... 
That's third. like third place straight away. If you were able to win both of those. So. Targa just does it all. He just Targa does it all. The year of Targa happens. Where Targa finally just goes crazy and is able to do this. So, um, All right. Well, what kind of questions are we going to ask Targa? I don't know. I've got plenty. Okay. I, I'm, I'm on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. We are going to go to a short commercial break. And then when we are back, we are going to have an interview with the victor, Mr. Dignitas Targa. All right, welcome back, guys, to the World Championship Series European Premier League Season 3. We are on the line with none other than Targa himself. Targa, how are you doing, man? <laughs> Pretty good now. <laughs> That's about it. I can imagine so. Okay, right, okay so my first question is, uh, coming into this group, obviously you had Naniwa to prepare for as your first opponent. Uh, did you know thoroughly Naniwa's play style, and how did you prepare in response to that? Uh, I had a pretty good idea of how he played, and he had the same for me. If you saw the first two games, it's like direct blank counter of a style that I've been playing around with quite a bit, because mm -hmm. me and Naniwa used to practice before he went to Korea. So it's, there's a lot of blank countering, um, and uh, well, I just watched his games from... Um, uh, WCS and uh, just prepared mentally of how I should stop him and so on. I obviously failed like hell in the first two games, but it worked now. Did you uh, put much thought into practice versus Terran? Because right now uh, in WCS you actually have quite a high win percentage against Terran if you, if you knew that or not. Or did you just focus purely on the, the Protoss players that you'd probably have to face? I focused on everybody. I wasn't too sure that I was going to beat um, Naniwa, and uh, I had a. I thought that Todd would actually beat for GG because he uh, was a bit confident uh, when I talked to him previously, and um, so I, I prepared two builds for for GG, and uh, I would have loved to show them because uh, both of them are pretty uh, insane, but mm. I'm gonna save them for later. Okay then. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, so. In terms of um, the, the last series against Naniwa, 
Uh, after the first series, obviously, uh, not going as well as you would have hoped, um, can you run us through yeah. the second series? Um, because there was, there was a lot of back and forth there as well. Uh, well, the first game on Belcher, he was doing like a Warpace on Miracle. I played tons against it, so I knew exactly how to stop it. Yep. And um, on the second game, I thought he was going to fake like a 3 gate pressure and just uh, just to get me to overcommit on units. So I was very hesitant to uh, making units. Oh. Like I really wanted to make drones, but yeah, I, he just, just tricked me. And uh, the last game, uh, this style that he's been playing, he's been playing it for quite a bit. And obviously uh, all the protoses start copying it. And uh, MC was copying it um, when I played him on the European ladder. And uh, after the game, he asked me if I wanted some tips because I was obviously struggling against it. And um, well, he just told me make uh, roaches, queens, and infestors, and it's almost impossible for the protos to stop if you attack when you're maxed out. So yeah, I was <laughs> really happy that MC gave me that tip. Yeah, it looked really convincing in, in game three then. Yeah. Um, so you, you made it through, so uh, of course congratulations to the round of 16 in your debut uh, of the Premier League. Coming into WCS Premier League, did you like have any self-expectations or is it like step by step? What kind of, what's your thought process when it comes to that? Well, uh, I'm a pretty arrogant guy, so I want to at least <laughs> go round of eight. And it's kind of sad that I didn't make it to the previously two WCS. I really think that I should have been there, mm. but I failed miserably in every qualifier, like getting super close, and then I just lost my head. Um, so this time it went better. So you, you've played a lot of this WCS um, and in the qualification, a lot of it online, or all of it online, should I say. Yeah. Um, when, you, when it comes to playing in the round of 16 offline, uh, does that affect you at all? D is it completely fine? How are you approaching to playing offline in the studios face-to-face -to, -face to your next future opponents? Uh, it doesn't really affect me. I, the only, the, it's actually a positive because I will have a better computer, better ping and so on. Because mm. at the moment I'm at home in Norway and I don't have the best computer and the internet is really bad. Oh. Doesn't Norway have so as good internet as Sweden? All positive. No. No? Norway no. has bad internet? Not as good as Sweden, no one here, uh, I think. Well, the area that I live has really bad internet. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Mm. All right, uh, well, any last questions, Sean, before I wrap it up? No, I'm good. Cool, any last words, Targa, before we send you off into the night? Uh, it's, yeah, uh, sorry to Naniwa, I guess, because I ruined his chances of getting to BlizzCon, I think. That's at least what people are saying on Twitter. Maybe. Um, and yeah, a big shout out to Dignitas, of course. And again, I want to thank MC for giving me the tip. Are you playing at any uh, events coming up, by the way? Uh, or obviously, you're playing in WCS. Do you, you plan on going to Bucharest? Bucharest. Okay. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So we'll see him very soon as well as uh, the round of 16 later on. Uh, so congratulations, Saga, once again. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. All right, bye. Cool. So, that is Targa, ladies and gentlemen, the man who just exploded the internet. Yeah. He uh, did pretty well for himself. He did very well for himself. And that wraps up Group A, uh, week one, day one of the round of 32. We'll be back tomorrow, though, we with shall. Group B. And I actually quite like Group B. I don't think I like it as much as Group A. Today was a really special group, I think, because it was really close. I knew that upsets could be happening. Mm. But tomorrow's group has the reigning European champion in it. Oh, it does. It does. Duck Duck, he won all of our hearts during season two. And he goes up against Happy, Sase, and TLO. Three yeah. players that are very, very hungry, uh, as they've all had interesting roads in the past season, at least. Happy, the most consistent, being in each season so far. Duck Duck, the reigning champion. Sase makes his return back to the Premier League yes. after being absent in season two. And, of course, TLO is back once again to fight to see if he can continue and extend his run to get the points because he's not too far at that round of 16 either. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people uh, here want to see TLO advance onto the round of 16. Mm. When I say here, I mean in this general area that <laughs> is Germany, yeah. uh, as they would like to cheer him on during that round of 16. Uh, but also, don't forget, guys, uh, right after this, I think maybe in an hour or two, there is WCS America Challenger League going on. And uh, if I can remember the players correctly, it's Neeb, Drunken Boy, Hello Kitty, and Vibe. Uh, so. Make sure to tune in to WCS America as well. That's right. So that does it here in Europe for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place, 6 p.m. local time here in Germany. See you then.